was listening to Kanamala Fella, I said, let's do something called the Outback Fella. Can you hear us calling? G'day and welcome to Sinbun Passion Files. My name is Clancy Cinnamon and today my guest is a musician and all-round good bloke by the name of Josh Arnold. I tell you what, Josh has lived an incredible life. From his early days growing up in rural Queensland, chasing his dream as a musician, recording with ABC Music, having the opportunity to tour with Tanya Kernigan, and even winning a golden guitar with Lee Kernigan. He has done some amazing things, but now he has shifted his enthusiasm towards creating music and music videos with children and granting them access to the amazing storytelling power that music possesses. Uh, and I think it's really awesome. Basically what he does is he goes around from town to town, school to school, in particularly Queensland and rural Queensland, and basically goes to these schools, writes a song with the kids, creates a little music video to go with it, and basically just highlights the incredible community that they have. And I think that's really awesome because it gives people, and this is what sort of drew me towards his work, it gives people in the bush something realistic to relate to. I guess a lot of the time what we see on TV is based in the metropolitan areas, but to see your community or just rural communities in general coming to life through these music videos and just seeing how fun life really is in the bush, uh, I guess it just gives people something to be really grateful for. And I, uh, that's what I really love about what Josh does anyway. So uh, yeah, without any further ado, Please enjoy getting to know Josh Arnold. Ride it, ride it. I've never really grown up. I'm a bit like a kid. That just happens that music's my number one thing that I love. So, so I'm just so, so passionate. And I'm often, you know, I can be in a school situation working or, or whoever I'm working with, I work with people all the time and, and they're watching me run around and go, oh, let's try this, let's throw that in there. And I'm always, um, I'm always the most excited in the room. It's very rare I'm not. It's great working with kids in particular because um, when you say we're going to write a new song, it's not going to be a parody. The whole, all new music, new lyrics, and and we need to to start from scratch. They're generally really excited about it. Um, you know, often their their enthusiasm. It's it's hard to keep that enthusiasm all the time. It's really hard work writing a song. So you know, if I've got the same group with me for a whole day, for example, you know, it might be yeah midday, one o'clock. They're starting to you know slide down. I've got to keep keep them moving but um, it definitely helps because kids are, are just so open to creativity. Kids want to create new things, that's what they do. So I've had sort of ebbs and flows and ups and downs but so going back to the start of this, I learned guitar and was songwriting as a teenager. I picked up a publishing deal through ABC Music Publishing at about 19, which is quite young, and, and it was only a few years after that I got a record deal with ABC Music, and um, so I brought out three CDs, and my first CD I, I brought out won a golden guitar, I did a song with Lee Kernigan. You know, there's a lot happening, I was touring with Tanya Kernigan, and, and then from there, sort of things, uh, I moved away from country for a little while, and so things sort of went off the, uh, uh, you know, went down a little bit from there, but picked back up. I, some of the new music I had got synced on TV shows and, you know, Ghost Whisperer, Neighbours Home and Away and had some success in the music licensing area and um, I've sort of shot myself in the foot a bit wanting to start again but it was just me, I think partly just my enthusiasm for music. I just love so many different styles, even though I'm a country boy. You know, I just love, I come from such a background, diverse influences. Um, so here I was with this new sort of sound of music, more singer-songwriter, acoustic stuff. All right, hold on to your hats. We're now going to a guy who has started to turn heads in the music industry. Josh Arnold is a talented singer-songwriter from Toowoomba in Queensland. Your passion, I think, is a big thing. For people who don't know, Josh actually turned up here at our production office and just played for everyone and said, I reckon I'm pretty good. I'm going to prove it to you and I want to come on the show. And it was fantastic. Blew everybody away. I had a guy helping me and he, he said, look, I know someone at Sunrise... Um, but you just got to go in and play to a room full of um, people and producers and 
and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm there. So I just, oh, you know, I had never had a lot of fear with that sort of stuff. Um, I just sort of went into the room and asked me a few questions and I sat there and played them a couple of songs, just like a board meeting room and um, Koshy and Mel weren't in there, but, um, but then uh, they said, yeah, we'll give you a go. I got a little bit on Instagram, on the Outback Fellas Instagram, and the um, really bad quality home video um, of me playing with Lee Kernigan on stage. But uh, it was good, and Lee was re- Lee was great. He was he was a real um, real mentor for me. But but it's interesting. A lot of what's got me places has been a lot of the similar traits align with that. They run a parallel line that have probably hindered some some success at different times. I've always been very um, pig-headed and 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 just believe I just want to follow my own journey and do, follow my own path. I've never been a big part of cliques and, and uh, I've always, you know, gone on a lot of things on my own. Uh, and, you know, I probably, I think, think uh, when me and Lee sort of drifted apart, you know, he, he, he had a lot of, um, as a mentor, had a lot of things, advice he gave me and, and he probably was a little bit upset when I didn't take that advice all the time. And, uh, and so, you know, uh, that's just that's just the way things go. And there's a lot of people I didn't take advice from, and it was no disrespect to them. I just I just always believed that I just had to just lock into my own path and do what I thought was right. And 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 whether it was right or not doesn't really matter. It's just the point that you just um, you just do what you do, and 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 it's led me to where I'm at now, and I'm I'm happy with with where I'm going and what I'm doing. So I get I guess in some ways it was right, you know. Back to the bush. In the town of Mars, back to the bush, heading back to the bush. There's been some things that I've really had to start from scratch again, like, you know, you're there and you win a golden guitar, and then you're in this spot where you're in a classroom with kids on teacher aid rates for the start, start with, you know, for $20 an hour, because no matter where you go to, if you change from something to something else, you're back at the bottom, you know. and But that bottom place is where everything is learnt. And that's where I learnt everything. I'm there, you know, struggling to make a living again, room full of kids, having to deal with behaviour issues and being a musician and trying to write songs and start something new and, and, and flourish at something new. But you start at the bottom and everything you learn in that, that moment um, makes you who you are and, and, and strengthens you. And I think to stay at, at a certain thing and things to be too easy or if, or if um, things just keep moving on this plateau um i think i think a lot of uh the substance can be taken out of what you do and who you are you can be a bee to the honey and and follow things but i think it's important to keep changing and remember that um, you don't want to grow stale uh, because i think more importantly they're talking about the passion thing so i've had small town culture going for a very long time and and it's been community and school projects and i've sort of um been doing a lot of different stuff i started the outback fella and it's been really hard work and it's sort of like, yeah, once again, you make a change and you've got to start from scratch and do some hard work. A lot of it was, is, has been complemented by small town culture. But um, the beauty in that is I didn't want to wake up one morning and go, ah, oh, you know, I'm losing my passion for this small town culture thing. Um, and I don't think I will, but just in case you go, well, I need to just keep diversifying and changing what I'm doing because... Um, I, I want to continue to wake up, even though it's hard work. I want to wake up every morning and want to do my job. I don't want to wake up and go, oh, not this again. You know, so I've never, as, as low stress as it is to be comfortable, it's, there's not a lot of stress in being comfortable, but um, I, I, I feel like there's a different sort of stress in, getting, in being bored and not passionate with what you're doing. And I, I constantly want to be challenged. And it, that, and that challenge keeps me passionate. Look for me, the big time is is a it's a strange term, but for me the big time is is what you're doing at at any moment. If if I believe if you can do an art form, whether it's music, film, and I do a bit of all that, and acting, anything, and you're actually getting paid, you know, it, it, it's big time because I'm I'm not doing a job I don't like. I'm I'm actually doing a job I like, and I'm getting paid, and I'm getting my kids through school, and 
paying my mortgage and, and all these things. And, and for me, that's, that's, that's a success. Success, you know, this idea of this big time place in the clouds, you know, yeah, it's there, but it's not something I'm necessarily going, I want that, I want that, I want that. I think that'll drive you crazy. I think you do it for the right... The reason you need to do it is because you have to be happy with what you're doing anyway. Whether you reach this big time status or not, that doesn't matter. I'm, I'm happy I'm happy doing what I'm doing. So the big time thing... Um, yeah, there's part of your ego that when you have them moments... Like I had a performance recently down in Hobart. Right? I can't remember a standing ovation where the whole audience stood up before. Maybe I've had it before, I can't remember. But I performed with a couple of schools and a choir at a conference down in Hobart. And this whole theatre of people stood up and, and applauded us. And um, it, it's, um, I'm thinking, well, this isn't necessarily the big time, but, but a moment like that, you still take that in and it still doesn't hurt your ego to have them moments. <laughs> you know? And then it's humbling to walk out of there and possibly the next week you're back in a classroom doing a workshop and having to discipline some, you know, some kid who's <laughs> mouthing off or something. You know, it's all part of it. It's like, yeah, I'm back to earth now and that's good. It's good for you to come back to earth. Jason, my co-worker who I work with um, with most of my small town culture projects, sort of said, well, hey, we need to do something with, with sort of more of a TV show type thing. I think, it, I think it'd be fun. And I said, yeah, well, I hadn't really thought of that. Let's, let's, let's have it try something. And I was, I was on a country trip somewhere um, in the middle of nowhere driving and I just had my playlist of different music playing and Kanamala Fella come on. And I just started singing to it and it just made me feel something real it just made me feel really connected to Australia and really connected to what we talk about that old g'day mate type of of um of Australian of who we are and and um and I, and that does come from the rural side of Australia you know it does I know there's there's amazing people all over Australia in the country and there's good and bad every walk of life metropolitan country but that original Aussie battler came from the country and so I felt that sort of connection within myself through that and um and i talked to jace I, I rang him and said you know let's do something i was listening to the katamala fella i said let's do something called the outback fella and and i'll take on that persona and it becomes something that it's 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 a gimmick but it's um it's something that's exciting for kids as well and it, it just becomes you know i still do the same thing I, I write songs i perform with kids and and we make videos but Here's someone, a persona that they might be able to relate to or, or, or have some fun with, you know. Are you ready, boys? Start your engines. Ready, set, go! And it's close. Cody's got the speed, but Hunter's got the pickup. We know that. Hunter's in the... Oh, look at it. It's going to come down to speed. It's tight. Oh, Cody! <laughs> what a race. When I started off, I was a sort of, I was saying, oh, it was really awkward because we, you don't know where it's going and you start off going, being a character and going, g'day, you know, I'm the, I'm the Outback fella. Then, then you sort of pull it back and just go, no, I, I'm just me um, and I'm Aussie anyway. And, uh, and so you just sort of become you. Uh, it's, it's like you in a, in a, in a Kubra. That's life. That's life. That's, That's life, life for me with the dogs and the sheep. Whenever you write a song, it's it's a performance, and and you are becoming someone. You know, you're never really you. Um, you know, with the Abac fellow or any sort of music, I do so many different types of genres. And when you sing a song that's a certain genre, you sort of take on a role that suits that genre. So you're in the entertainment business. So let's entertain. My daughters are dancers, and they got involved in the Abac fellow. Um, some performances. Um, the Miles Back to the Bush video, which you helped film on. Um, I look back at that, that little moment that afternoon was, um, one of the happiest, happiest moments of my life. I've got a few sort of moments I can look back on as, as really happy moments, but I just remember standing there on the stage thinking the rush of, you know, a couple of hundred kids jumping around the dirt in front of me who had wor worked with those kids and, and there's a connection there. And then having my two little girls up there growing up on stage with me, dancing and actually interacting with them and the audience, um, it was one of the most moving moments of my life. It's, um, uh, it's hard to put into words. So it's, it's amazing. And I love, I love them being involved. And, and the fact that they're, they're, our dad's not too uncool to actually get up and, and have fun on stage with. Give me a 
I've never had a lot of fear with, with that as far as a performer goes, um, but every time I release a new video or production, I have that moment because you're completely hanging your soul out there. And you know, I wrote this, you're basically saying to thousands of people on Facebook or Instagram, whatever you're doing, what do you think? I'm hanging it all out there and YouTube and, and you will get some negative and, and you've just got to, you know, it happens every time. But I've, I've never had the fear of performing or I've never had the fear of that. But, but yeah, you, you, every, every time you, you're stepping up, you're stepping up for a new challenge. It's never gets, it never gets old and you've, and you've got to prove yourself again and again and again and again. And well, you will prove yourself till you stop. Gonna leave our mark. We're breaking down the barriers of compromise isolation. Our teachers and families will help us reach our destination. Cause we are the face of kids in the country. Often it's really nice just to hear the stories of kids that go, look, yours will be the only thing I ever sing in. Singing's not going to be my thing, but I look back on it and and I was talking to a 15 year old boy who looked back at his performance when he was 10 and he still gets goosebumps and he's still moved by it. He doesn't want to become a singer, but he just says, I still get goosebumps and I, I'm, I'm so proud of what I did then, of that moment, and that will last forever. So I don't know if you necessarily, and, and look, it'd be nice, yes, if someone I work with and I gave a singing role to says, you know, becomes famous or something and, and or becomes it not so much famous, just becomes a success and comes back and says, Josh, you know, that inspired me. That would be nice. That's that's great. But it's more just all the little moments. I hope lots of kids just get something out of it, just that pride and something that lasts forever. Ready? At the moment, the Outback Fella is a really exciting point for me and I would like to envisage in 10 years I'm still taking this out as a, as a show. I would love the, the Australian character of the Outback Fella, which is partly me and my character, and, and interacting with different um, cultures around the world. The thought of just that interaction between people and cultures, I would like to, I would like to pursue that and like to um, see that as something that's that's um, alive and kicking in 10 years time so the outback fella is in weird places where you would never see a guy from australia in a kura but there could be a magic in those things and those moments well there you have it josh arnold what a legend i really admire the way he puts himself out there and the way that he's shared his talents and his passion with so many people and children throughout australia it's just awesome to see and I'm sure that all the children that have come in contact with Josh have taken something away that's had a positive and long lasting impact on their life and that that's awesome that is so cool that he has done that uh, yeah and I guess I'm just super grateful that he took the time to sit down and let me pick his brain for for a bit of time to, to just capture what's going on in there and, and, and share it with you all. So um, if the full chat is something that interests you, you can find the link for that down in the description. While we're down in the description, uh, feel free to check out Josh's social media, uh, the Outback Fellow and Small Town Culture. You can find the links to those, uh, his YouTube and also his uh, Facebook and Instagram. They're all down there. Uh, and while we're down in the description, may as well give myself a little plug for Sinbun96 on Instagram and uh, Please, 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 if you've got the opportunity, hit subscribe and like this video. Leave a comment if you've got any questions. But other than that, I'll be speaking to you and seeing you soon.